You know, the most important question we ask ourselves as Christians is, are we in the one true faith? There are so many false religions surrounding us. And the only one that can give us an affirmation is the one true God. And he's spoken one time through his word, the Holy Bible. So you have to search the scriptures daily and examine yourself to make sure that you are walking in that faith. That's why we're told in 2 Corinthians 13, 5, examine yourself, rather you be in that faith. It is important because we're told in Romans 14, 23, whatever is not of faith is sin. And the verse continues, don't you know your own selves that Jesus is in you? A Christian walk is only successful when you're reminded that the Spirit of Christ is in you, because then you are representing him. But when you forget, you're really only representing yourself and your own life. The Holy Spirit will reveal the things that are offensive to God if you look for them. But you've got to be obedient and remove the things that he shows you. And he can only show you if you're in God's word. James 1.23 says, If any man be a hearer and not a doer of the word, he's likened to a man looking at himself in the mirror. For he examines himself, and when he leaves, he immediately forgets the condition he's in. It's not that you don't see the problem. It's that maybe you don't see that it's a big deal. And when you leave the mirror, you don't change. This is the pathway that leads to a prodigal son. You're shown your condition. You don't think it's so bad. You don't feel any conviction and you continue in that sin. You've taken yourself to a place where there is no light, no mirror, no measurement of God, so you can't see or change your condition. And without conviction, you're going to attempt to stay there. But if you belong to the Father, He won't allow you to stay. God knows what you're doing. You're only comparing yourselves to others like yourself that have fallen into the pig pen. And this is called foolish. And in 2 Corinthians 10.12, it says that. But they measure themselves by themselves. And then they compare themselves among others like them. This is not wise. It's a fool's trap. You know, why do we always compare ourselves to ones that are failing in their walk, that aren't measuring up to God? Only to turn around and say, look, I'm not as bad as this guy. If you're playing games like this, you're never going to change. It is not wise. And when you stand in the mirror of God's reflection, he's going to show you your condition. So then you pick up the soap, which is the word of God, and wash yourself with the living water, the Son of God. 1 Corinthians 15.48 says, As we were born the image of the earthly, such are they also that are earthly. And as is the heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly. John 3.13 says, And no man has ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man which is in heaven. You know, this is the heavenly image that you're going to put on in order to exist in heaven. This is why we want to reflect God's only Son. If you are not reflecting that image, you're not going to be prepared for the travel. 1 Corinthians 15.49 says, And as you were born with the earthy image, you will also bear the heavenly image. You know, we were born with the works of the flesh, and we bear the works of the cross. And when you do this, your Father in heaven will approve. I believe that if you're going to wear the cross, you should bear the cross. And if you're going to change, you're going to need to reflect on him that died on the cross for you. You know, we have this earthly image to exist here on earth. But you need to be born again with that heavenly image 
in order to exist in heaven. Now this is how that process works. When you first accept the works of Jesus Christ on the cross for your sins, you're going to receive the Holy Spirit to direct you and search your heart and life. This is where the reflection of His image will begin in you. 1 Corinthians 2.10 says, But God will reveal to them by His Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. So we hear from this verse that the Holy Spirit will reveal hidden things to you, to God. And the hidden things of God will be revealed to you. The Holy Spirit will search the things that you're hanging on to. He will search and find the fears of your heart. And he will reveal them to God so that God can mend these things. 1 Corinthians 2.11 says, For what man knows the things of man except the spirit of man that is in him? Even so the things of God no man knows but the spirit of God. What this verse is saying is, you only know the things that were revealed to you by other men that have lived lives like you. But the things of God are only known and revealed by that Spirit of God. Now this is where you're looking at yourself becomes important. The hidden things in you will be compared to the image of God's only Son. And if they don't measure up, you need to remove these things from your life. So then, as you begin to clean house, the Holy Spirit will then replace those things with hidden things of God that are revealed to you. 1 Corinthians 2.12 says, For we have not received the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit which is of God, that we would know all things which are given freely to us by our Father. And in 1 Corinthians 2.14 it says, But the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, because they are foolishness to him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. You know, this sounds a lot like the guy that saw his image in the mirror and thought, ah, there's nothing here for me to change. And then he walks away. He believes that this searching procedure is foolishness. The fallen man will always compare himself among the fallen. But you are indwelled by the Holy Spirit. And he will reveal and compare to you the things of God. And this makes you a child of God. 1 John 3, 2 says, Beloved, we're now the sons of God, and it does not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, because we shall see him as he is. So we look in the mirror to reflect his image. And this is for a purpose. Because when he returns, we will be like him. Now, if you looked in the mirror and you saw nothing you needed to change, you need to take another closer look and turn to the Lord. And then he'll show you. This is food that I provided to my family for years. I want to now provide it to you. I hope you'll share it with a friend. If you like it, I'll provide more. Thank you for listening and God bless you.